right? I, so what has the mixed response been to the single? So uh, I get maybe mixed response is the wrong word. Um, more about people being like, okay, um, this isn't this isn't like rapping hard, you know, mm -hmm. uh, especially coming from overtime. It's yeah. like, uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm kind of pegged the, the guy who just will always bring bar after bar. And um, I think people are taken aback, like, all right, this seems more like a song than uh, like a rap exercise. And I'm like, yeah, yeah good, you know, <laughs> good. Uh, you know, uh, and, and, I, and I guess the mixed part is that would be one response. And then other people are just in love with the actual song, oh, which yeah. is obviously what, what you hope for, really. Right. Yeah, yeah, I like the direction you're going, you know, selfies kill, the autograph before yeah, I blow yeah, up, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it I, I think if you if you're you know if you're from that era then it, it tugs at a string for you because yeah, you're yeah. just like yeah man that's that's what we used to do you know yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember back in the day you try to get your CD signed get your poster signed exactly and I was like you just take a selfie and move on <laughs> and and then mind you I'm not in the center of the selfie uh -huh. I'm just like featured in your selfie I just because the camera's really facing <laughs> you I'm just like yeah, yeah. yeah you know so do you feel like with the way that whole shift has happened like it's cheapened celebrity in a sense like it's cheapened the art or what it means to meet someone you idolize i don't think it's cheapened it versus you know having to understand that it's evolved into this and having to adapt to it mm -hmm. uh you know the song is, is merely about how you know it, it's just like I, this is the time now man this is this is what it's about now um i can't necessarily hold on to what it used to be anymore even though growing up this is what i was hoping for i was hoping that as soon as i get to this stage uh, you know, it would be that it'd be people um, with with the album, with the physical, ready for you to sign it, with like posters, uh, yeah. ready for you to sign, and and posters up on walls and stuff. I don't think it cheapens it versus it was never gonna stay. Nothing stays the same. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, shifting back to the first single, Overtime. Yeah. I think when it first dropped, there was the conception that that was gonna be part of a deluxe version. Of dreams are plenty now. Correct. It got switched to D dreams be plenty. Yes. What was the? So, you know what it was, man. Um, so it's 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 that actually was the intention. Mm -hmm. The problem with dreams a plenty deluxe um, was kind of uh, it felt like it felt like just just in terms of industry standard the mm -hmm. right thing to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Um, there was a little more hype on me now after, you know, winning the award after, you know, what my run was last year. And we kind of felt like, okay, maybe then you, you, you put out the album again for people who missed it. You yeah. know, that's normally what you do. My, my biggest issue with that was that um, it kind of makes the people who really rock with you have to wait for much longer for brand new, a brand new product altogether. Yeah. And, you know, I do believe in in really feeding the people who really ride with you. You know what I mean? Um, so my whole thing was, you know what? You know, we are in a position where we, you know, Dreams Be Plenty as an album was already three quarters in. Yeah. Uh, whilst we were working on like material for Dreams A Plenty. Okay, okay. And uh, I just kind of felt like, you know what, man? Just give something new to everybody, you know, including people who already had Dreams of Plenty. You know, mm -hmm. they deserve it. They deserve, um, you know, to, 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 to feel something brand new at the same time as people who just jumped on the ship yeah. now. You know what I mean? And, and also, man, it was also just listening to the material we were making for the deluxe and the material in Dreams Be Plenty. Uh, I think what the, what the deluxe was kind of sounding like was two different worlds yeah. where it was what dreams of plenty was which is which is perfect for that time you know and 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 my coming out with the debut but there's growth and like i said man we made this thing two and a half years ago even though it came out last year so just as an artist i wasn't in the same place so you'd be listening to this deluxe listening to uh dreams a plenty and then stumbling on the newer material and it's just like yo okay this is bigger this is better in my mind, I was like, why wouldn't people just start listening, not start listening from track 14? Because yeah. this is bigger. This has evolved. So then I, you know, then I made the executive decision. I spoke to the team and I was like, 
nah man you know what let's 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 work towards dreams be plenty there's there's definitely space for overtime in this project because mm -hmm. it's all made in the same vein at the same time or whatever so it sits comfortably in the project um so let's just do that all you right. know and yeah and that's how we stumbled on this so last month you dropped another joint with uh blacklist yes hit the ground and that was tied in with the g promotion correct correct how'd that come about and how's that single doing man um so <laughs> you know the the dope thing about how this actually came about was like uh, it was a proper stamp for me that we're doing things right because this wasn't a it wasn't my team you know uh, trying to sell me to a brand yeah. um, Black, Li Black Liz and I made were all part of a list that Jeep was looking at then we made the short list then they landed on the two of us okay. you know what I mean oh. so this wasn't a yo we have an idea jeep you know <laughs> here's the blueprint what do you think this was literally them going these are the two artists that we think will serve this best all right um and 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 again that for me that was uh, that was a that was a very big moment just in my career just in terms of um you know i'm fighting for lyricists to be seen in a very commercial space i'm fighting for lyricists to be seen at the forefront as an unapologetically as in be on the exact same stage as a Casper right now. That that's the dream. I I I don't believe in this. Uh, okay, cause you're a lyricist, just perform in that corner in Brahm. That's all you get. You know what yeah. I mean? The idea is to be at the forefront completely, and for a brand to be like, yeah, we just need lyricists to paint this picture. I was just like, hell yeah, that's exactly what it should be. You know, um, if you need words constructed a certain way come to us this is what we do and um yeah so and and you know they they kind of gave us free free reign in terms of um you know con conceptualizing the track and what it stands for obviously we are talking brand so there there will be like kind of all these borders and restrictions just to make sure that it's upholding what the brand is yeah. um but that's the track we came up with and they really loved it uh yeah i think you know what I think Les and I don't necessarily treat it as a as a single, as in it's not a solo single, it's not a blacklist single. I think especially for a solo or a blacklist fan, uh, they kind of hear that it's in it's it sits in its own space. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dope track nonetheless. It just sits in its own space. It's it's not a body of work that you'd anticipate to hear on a solo uh, project or maybe a blacklist project. But but that's the that's the that's the beauty of the artistry, you know. We can live in any of these spaces. We can we can jump on a very high high tempo, high high energy production and still live there and still like excel on that kind of a thing, you know. So, uh, but for what it is and what it does and what it's done for us uh, by living its own life is that um, it's kind of just solidified us in uh, again in terms of this commercial space. Mm -hmm. Uh, whilst bringing what we bring so it's kind of just uh it's kind of just elevated things while whilst we work on our own things at the same time which is which is really dope right. yes, yeah you just touched on a very important point um yeah. you want lyricists to be recognized and uh, treated the same way as a quote-unquote commercial rapper not even same way but higher <laughs> I, okay. I won't i won't lie man i can't i can't sugarcoat this anymore man mm -hmm. i i ex i expect I expect rap to be understood um, and understanding rap means understanding what the difference is between in lyricism in the different levels of lyricisms mm -hmm. you know uh, I think I think it's important to be like okay this artist can take it here this artist can take it there you know and I feel I fall in that in that space of the artist who can take it right up there and and as a result, I feel like <laughs> what should be due to me is everything, I you know. know. With, and and you know what it is here. It's com it's almost the complete opposite. But you teach people. All right. So yeah. does Poster Child represent that nexus of the, that idea, where um, you're trying to make something that could be appealed to the point of the masses? Nah. Or is that just a new direction? Absolutely not, man. That's just evolution of what our sound is right now. Yeah. That's it. There's no, it's very, 
what I've learned in this in this little space is that that becomes very confusing. Mm-hmm. You know, when when I believe in what you do, and then you tell me to chill whilst you try go get those people over there who don't believe in what you do. Um, it almost feels like you don't care for us who care for what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, so I definitely don't believe in that. Anything you hear from me, whether you think, oh man, this is a different sound, um, or it, it, it's, it's, it, it sounds a little more commercially appealing or whatever, that's never, um, it's never a calculation to try get more people or, yo man, radio requires this. It's never that. Um, you're hearing you're hearing music getting bigger because the the producers I work with are getting bigger. Uh, the way we write songs is getting better. We structure things differently. It might be unconventional, but it's different. And um, yeah, it's never it's never to try get someone who isn't really messing with you in the first place. I think uh, I always say this where um, you know a, a, a painter doesn't go out and ask people what they'd like to see on a painting before they paint mm-hmm. you paint it makes sense to you yeah. people who relate come and appreciate that's as far as it goes right. um, and also people then um, you might not be a fan of you know the arts of paintings but you can learn mm-hmm. and that's all it is but right. paint correctly paint paint your true message and you know what you're trying to depict and the rest will come, man. Right. At least, at least that's what we believe. We might be like very naive <laughs> dudes in a studio, right, but that's what we believe, man. All right, dope. Well, well, we appreciate your time, man. Thank you, man. Definitely Thank you for we'll having me. We'll try to push that new single, and we look out for the album when it drops. For sure. Thanks, Lord. Thank you, sir. Nice.